Hi there everybody, Ollie here, aka Secret Nimbus here with another episode of Magic Jaws Origins. So for today's Friday Night Magic deck tech and gameplay, I'm going to be introducing a bit of a gimmicky deck. So we're back with the red-green theme for this week, except this time we're going for a slightly different theme. So we're going for land synergy in this particular deck. So to start us off, we've got Molten Vortex, in which case we discard land and deal 2 damage to target creature or player. So a nice damage dealing card. Got Fiery Impulse, a couple of copies of that just to uh, deal with a little bit of early game aggression which I was having problems with while uh, playtesting this deck. Gate Group of Vines to dig to land, to dig for land, so uh, for both ramping and for late game Molten Vortex drops. We've got the Elvish Visionary for the card draw. Uh, debating whether or not to take one of these out to add in another Fiery Impulse, but uh, I quite like having the copies of the Elvish Visionary in there for now. We've got the Ravaging Blaze, so we've got a uh, Burn Spell, which uh, relies upon uh, dealing X damage, so we want lots and lots of mana for that. I've put Chandra in. I haven't playtested with, with her in this deck, but I wanted to fit her in just as a kind of an extra damage dealer and as a kind of a, an additional win condition maybe, so um, we'll see how that goes. Nissa is always nice. Uh, she's there for the ramp and then also for the card draw and the further ramping uh, later on as well, and then potentially her ultimate as a win condition. This is Pilgrimage, so the key ramp card in this deck. Get to three mana and you're suddenly uh, pulling forests out of your deck hand over fist. Zendikar Incarnate, which relies upon its uh, power, is reliant rely upon the number of lands you control, so it at least comes down as a 4-4 and then potentially gets even bigger. Got the Acid Moss, so this is one of the land destruction cards in the deck, so we get to 4 mana, we can start pinging off people's land to really troll them. This is the kind of, people hate this card, and for good reason, it is very frustrating, but also very satisfying to use it at the same time. Got the Zendikar's Royal, so every time we drop a land, we get to put a 2-2 token in play. Chandra's, Chandra's Ignition, so a nice board clear, so uh, you drop this on top of either Gaia's Revenge or a Zendikar Incarnate, and you've basically cleared the board and paved your way for a huge punch in the face to your opponent at the same time. Into the Moor of Hell, only running two copies of this. It's a nice uh, land destruction and creature removal all rolled into one card. Only got two copies as uh, it's quite situational because you have to deal that 13 damage to a creature. Whereas the Acid Moss is kind of like, just destroy a land, you get a nice free land of it out yourself. This ha You have to destroy a creature, and if you've only got a creature on the board, then it, you have to either destroy your own creature or not play it at all. And then finally, in terms of the punchy punchy face, we've got a two got two copies of Guy's Revenge, so you drop this down with seven mana, and you've you've basically almost won, because it can't be countered, has haste, and, isn't, and can't be the target of non-green spells or abilities, so fairly crazy. In terms of the mana base, we've got seven basic uh, mountains, ten basic forests, the uh, Rootbound Crags, a Rogue's Passage just in case, and a Gruel Guild Gate. So that is the deck, let's go play some games. Okay guys, for game number one we're playing a rank 26 Mr. T, I believe that's what his name said. Um, can I keep this hand? I think I can. I've uh, got a Molten Vortex, and we've got a Ravaging Blaze, and a Nissa's Pilgrimage, so we'll be hoping to draw into one of our threats fairly early on. Yeah, we're playing Mr. T. TNG. I have no idea what that's supposed to say, but uh, but hey ho. So we've got a, uh, a damage dealing card down fairly early on, which we can like use it to ping off a creature or something maybe, depending on what kind of deck my opponent's playing. Evolving Wilds kind of indicates to me it might be tricolored, or it just might be a deck in which he wants to search for lots of land. So let's see what he finds. He's found a white. Okay, interesting. We'll have to wait and see what kind of deck he is playing, but. Uh, well, we're going to draw on turn two, an Elvish Visionary. That is like the perfect turn two drop here. So we should play you, draw ourselves a card. We've got a second Nissus Pilgrimage, okay, interesting, interesting. So we're going to be ramping fairly quickly. We're going to be sifting lots of mana out of our deck, put it that way. We could do that second red mana for the Ravaging Blaze, which will be uh, nice later on with the uh, Spell Mastery. Okay, so he's played a second white mana, so I can't understand why he would Evolving Wilds and find a white mana, which is bizarre, but hey-ho. So I'm tempted to almost ping that card off this turn with the uh, Molten Vortex, just because he's not really left anything else open. Okay, we found Chandra's Ignition as well, so I'm probably going to kill that card. So we're going to deal two damage to you, we're going to throw away the forest, because basically I've got the two Nissus Pilgrimages, so I don't really care. I've got lots of land incoming. So the only thing I'd really like to draw into right now would be a second red banner to activate like Ravaging Blaze and Chandra's Ignition for later on. So we got rid of that top and free blade. Get rid of it. 
Okay, he's playing mono white, but he's running Evolving Wilds. Why would you run a fetch land in a monocolor deck? That's bizarre. I mean, you don't even really need to do it in a dual color deck. Why would you? I, I don't know. The only thing it would do is just thin your deck down. Okay, so we found Zendikar's Royal, which is nice. So we shall probably just swing with the Elvis Visionary, see if he blocks. Come on. Got a, bit, got a little bit of lag uh, creeping in here. So yeah, we want to get his Endercar's Royal down, get our token generation underway. Kind of counterproductive, these two enchantments, but uh, at the same time, not really so bad. So we'll grab two mana, like so. Uh, I think we'll play the forest, just so we can actually play Zendikar's Royal at the beginning of our next turn. So we won't be able to activate Spell Mastery on Ravaging Blaze next unless we activate Mrs. Pilgrimage, so... So he's going to swing. I'd assume he would. Which he did. Okay. I can't actually ping it off with the uh, Molten Vortex. Mostly because I don't have a mana and mostly because I don't have a red mana open, so... Uh... Okay, so what's my opponent going to do next? Yeah, it'd be nice if I could draw into something like my Zendikar Incarnate or my, um, what's it called? Guy's Revenge fairly soon would be pretty good as we're ramping up nice and quickly. There we go, we've got to find our second red source, which is good, so I shall play Zendikar's Royal first before playing out my, uh, my mana. So then we'll play out the Gruul Guild Gate, which will generate us a token, lovely 2 2 token. Very nice, and we'll just swing with the Elvish Visionary. I mean, I could Chandra's Ignition the 2-2, potentially, which is an option. It's a thing. It's not a good thing, but it's a thing. I think next turn with the Nissa's Pilgrimage, I'd like to try and avoid playing any of my red mana so that I can actually activate Molten Vortex. Ah, this could be a problem. If he grasps with a high... Oh, he's uh, managed to pump that up. No, oh, no, he's pumped up that one. No, but that's going to get... Make, that's going to become plus three... That's going to get tapped, and he's going to swing with the 2-2. Two, two. Okay. So, I, I almost want to Chandra's Ignition here, and then kind of then destroy his Blessed Spirits with a uh, land. Which could work. It's going to be one way of eliminating that. Finding a bigger creature would also work as well. Huh, like a Zendikar Incarnate. Okay, so I think we're just going to skip attack here. Skip attack. And then play the uh, Zendikar Incarnate. In preparation for the Fatty Chandra's Ignition coming up fairly soon. Okay, we're in a really good position here. We found one of our threats. We've got a board sweep. So I'm hoping that he plays some more stuff. I want him to kind of... I want to get more value out of Chandra's Ignition. I always like to get as much value as possible out of this because I know that it's such a devastating card if my opponent has played a crap ton of cards out. I mean, I'll lose my, uh, my other two creatures, but it's fine. So he's going to swing with both. Okay, interesting. So I could get a potentially huge hit here. So one of them gets tapped down. Okay, interesting. I'm going to block with you because you're probably going to end up dead anyway next turn from the Chandra's Ignition. So I was expecting this. I'm expecting Celestial Flare. Yeah, which is why I didn't block with the, um, with the Zendikar Incarnate. So... Uh, Mono White, I was like, it's got to be Celestial Flare. If he's left mana open, I'm expecting a Celestial Flare. It's just kind of obvious. Come on, play another creature. You know you want to. Play out another card. Damn it. Damn it. I wanted value. It's fine. We've got a Ravaging Blaze. To do it. Oh, no. That was... A oh, what am I doing? I did not mean to do that. Um, That was really dumb of me. Oh, I shouldn't have done that at all. Uh, I might wait another turn for the... Um, Oh god, has he got another Celestial Flare? No, oh, he's got Reprisal. Well, that really pisses in my cornflakes, doesn't it? That's really frustrating. So I just pushed through one damage here, and my Chandra's Ignition is now extremely... Imp uh, not, not, that, not that great, so I'm really tempted to just Ravaging Blaze to Blessed Spirits now. Uh, one, two, three... Ah, uh, let's... let's Let's just go the whole hog. If we're going to make use of the spell mastery, we may as well... Oh, do I have spell mastery? Oh, no, I didn't have spell mastery. What am I doing? 
Whoopsie daisy, I completely forgot that I hadn't played out the second Mrs. Pilgrimage. Well, that's a huge misplay. At least I've still got the Chandra's Ignition. So, I could still Chandra's Ignition, say for example, an Elemental. And he's played Sigil of the Empty Throne, so I probably want to do this, like, now. Because he's probably got an enchantment in hand. So he's going to tap down the 2-2, two -two, which is fine. Well, I feel well, I feel foolish. I completely forgotten that I would have wouldn't have bothered with that. Um, I don't think it's going to lose me the match at this rate, but it's just a bit bit silly of me. So, ooh, we've got acid moss, very nice. So I'm tempted to go Chandra's ignition, or do I swing first then Chandra's ignition then start playing around with land shenanigans later on? We'll just swing with both here. We'll get the extra point of damage in from the obvious visionary. And then we'll just Chandra's Ignition. There we go. So, I don't know what that is. I'm hoping it's not, nothing too good. At least we'll get the two lands from the Nissa Pilgrimage to start activating the Molten Vortex instead, which is always nice. Because we're going to have to try and deal with these uh, this Sigil of the Empty Throne at some point. So, he's not played out anything yet. So he hasn't played out anything at all. Okay, that makes me slightly happy. I'm hoping that he's just got... Um, what's the word I'm looking for? Let's just start playing out uh, elemental tokens. We'll swing with this one. Okay, so I'm hoping that all he's got is enchantments, and now he doesn't actually have any creatures to go along with them, which would make me extremely happy. We're also going to acid moss him as well, just in case he needs like lots of mana. I don't think there's any creatures in this deck which... Um, so we're going to get ourselves another another elemental token, which is nice. We'll save the Nissus Pilgrimage. No point playing it. I'll play it next turn, unless I get something better, like a Gaia's Revenge. So yeah, this has been a really good first game to actually showcase how this deck should work. It's been quite nice. Uh, nice to kind of keep on top of the mono-white aggression. Okay, he's played Skyhunter Skirmisher, so that's clearly dead next turn. Depending on what he plays now, I'm hoping. Damn Nimbus Wings. Damn, 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 damn. So he gets an angel. No, he doesn't get an angel token. Interesting. This could be bad for him. No, he is going to get the angel token. Okay, so at least we can kill the angel token. So I'm guessing you know, he can't swing with that. Okay, so what have I got? It's going to be good. Mountain is good. So let's play out the Nissus Pilgrimage first. I did not... Why would you do that? Ugh. Two and three. We'll get the last of our... Uh... So basically what it's done is it's completely screwed me over. It's tapped my red mana so I can only actually play out one... So I could destroy the 4-4, four -four, for example, um, and then leave the 2-3 alive. No, I can't even do that. Yeah, I could play the mountain and then basically get rid of two lands. And then leave that alive and then just swing with three creatures. Yeah, I think we have to do that. So let's do that. So we're going to destroy. So deal two damage to you. Discard a land. So yeah, annoyingly, I could have done more there. But uh, frustratingly, it completely screwed me over. And then we're just going to... Kill you. Discard a land. There we go. And we're going to swing with all our um, tokens. So we're going to push through four damage here. If the game, you know, works. Oh, should I have done that to his face? I would have pushed through four. No, I wouldn't have pushed through four damage. I would have pushed through two damage with the token. And so I would have only pushed through six. Maximum. Whereas here, I've got rid of his angel. And then also pushed through four damage. So push through four damage, he goes down to five. So I'm wondering what he's got here. If he's got an enchantment, I could be fairly boned. Yeah, if I hadn't tapped all my red mana there, I would have been in a much better position there. But annoyingly, the game just decided I, I wasn't paying attention and just like let it tap my red mana, even though I didn't want it to, which is the game being sometimes it's really clever sometimes it won't tap red mana if it knows that i've got abilities which require it but another times it's like yeah so he's going to swing with the two three so i'm hoping he's got nothing but mana in hand maybe 
So I lose a little bit of health there. I go down to eight. If he's got an enchantment, he gets an angel but loses. If he's only got a creature, so, oh, tragic arrogance. Okay, that's kind of upsetting. So I think I may have just lost here. Yeah, if I hadn't kind of misplayed earlier on, if ugh, this is really annoying because I could have possibly done more with this if I hadn't done certain misplays and stuff, so I get to keep a token. But he has to get rid of his enchantment, so... I don't know. Oh, we've got Nyssa. Ooh. Ooh. This could be good. Uh, yes, I would like to use his ability, please. Now, do I... I think I'm, gonna, I think I'm just going to kill... Oh, I've got no forest left, have I? Oh, great. I've forgotten about that. I've actually played out every single one of the forests in the deck. Which is not good. So he goes down to three. Thankfully, he's got... I'm, I'm assuming one of them is going to be an enchantment, which he can replay on the 1-1. One, one. Ugh. That is really kind of frustrating. So he's played a Rogue's Passage. Okay. Is that an enchantment? No, it's a Consul's Lieutenant. So we're not out of this yet. I wonder what he's going to do. Is he going to swing at my face? No, he's not. So what am I going to get? I'm going to get Chandra. Ooh, interesting. So we're going to play you out. So, I don't swing. Uh, skip attack. So, at the moment, I he's dead in three turns. But then again, I'm dead in a couple of turns. So, I don't know what's going to go here. Um, <laughs> he, can't, he, he can't really swing, I suppose. Because then it leaves me open to win. So, he has to, like, not swing. I can't swing. But I've got Chandra to deal direct damage to his face. Okay, he swung. Interesting. Um, skip blocking. So that renowns, but what's he got in hand? If it's an angel token, he's dead. If it's an enchantment, he's dead, basically. If it's a creature, he's still pretty dead. That made no sense. I think he's just I think he's just realized that he couldn't do anything there because. This is going to be... He shouldn't have swung because he would have prevented me from swinging. That's really weird. I don't get why he decided to swing there because he could have stopped these two from swinging. I know he was dead in three turns, but he still could have, you know, played something. So we just swing with everything here. Okay, so we ended up winning. I thought I wasn't going to win for a second there, but uh, this was useless because I've already played out all of the forests in my deck. But let's go on to game number two, guys. Okay, guys, so we're playing a rank 27, Noobs of People 2. Uh, got the uh, atypical homeless Jason in the Wasteland uh, portrait, but uh, I think we can keep this hand. Got the two other visionaries, we've got the Zendikar's Royal, and four lands to go with it. So, not a bad start, really. Not a bad start, indeed. So, he's mulliganed down at least once. Please say mulligans down again. We want to see how that little. Nope, he has not. So, he's got seven cards, we've got seven cards. He's on the play. Okay, we're playing Golgari. This. Uh, is interesting. This is either Golgari Control or something more sinister, which is the Elves. So, I'll let the Rogue Passage here just to disguise what we're doing at first. If this is Elves. Fire Impulse could be useful. I need to tell that my volume is really loud. It's got a little uh, volume rocker on my uh, headset, which is quite nice. I'm just going to turn that down a wee bit. Not my headset, my headphones. I don't have a headset. I have a microphone. Okay. Red, green, black. Interesting. Not what I was expecting. Uh, so we're going to play out the forest here. And an Elvis Visionary. So let's make him think we're playing elves. More mana. Okay. Interesting. Not the most useful right now. Could be good if we were to draw, say, for example, what is it? My Molten Vortex. That would be nice. Uh, also, it's going to be nice for Zendikar's Royal later on when we get there. When we get there, of course. Okay, Nantuku Husk. Interesting. What kind of deck is he playing? I have no idea. Honestly, I don't. So I think this turn's going to be Fiery Impulse and uh, an Elvish Visionary. So we'll probably do Fiery Impulse pre-combat. Swing with the Elvish Visionary. Ooh, we've got a uh, Chandler's Ignition for later. So we'll just play the Mountain. Play the Fiery Impulse. Get rid of you. Swing with the Elvish Visionary. 
we're two turns away from Zendikar's Royal. And start getting our tokens uh, underway. Play out the Elvish Visionary as well. Got Chandra's Ignition for potential sweeping, if necessary. And we find another Elvish Visionary. So it's uh, three out of the four copies that we've found so far. I don't mind. It just means more card draw for me. But uh, yeah, awesome. So has he got a turn three play? Or was he hoping on the Nantuku Husk? Looks like he was hoping on the Husk. Okay, so we've got another... Uh, the mana, so I think we should drop the mountain here. Then we'll drop the forest next turn to get the Zendikar's Royal in play. This thing with the two Elvis Visionaries. Let's keep drawing cards. Take him down to 17. Play another Elvis Visionary. See what we get. Molten Vortex would be quite nice. That way I could always ping off something. Nope, we've got Zendikar Incarnate, which is pretty incredible as well, actually, if I'm gonna if I'm gonna be honest. Because we do have that with the Chandra's Ignition, so we've got a seriously good hand right now. So I think next turn... How much have we got? One, two, three, four... Yeah, I think next turn might be Zendikar's Royal. So he's going to get two mana out of that. So one on the battlefield, one in hand. Do you have anything else to play, or is that it? No, that is it. Okay, so I don't really want to play out Zendikar Incarnate quite yet. So let's drop the forest. Swing with the three elves. So we're doing three damage a turn right now, which is pretty sweet. We'll play out Zendikar's Royal. Get it on the battlefield now, for when I want it later. So I won't be hoping, I won't, I'm thinking don't generate any tokens yet. Play out Zendikar Incarnate, potentially board wipe, and then start generating tokens with the rest of my mana. So so we've played Enthralling Victor. Okay, so you get to nick one of my elves till the end of turn. And you'll deal one damage. whoop de freaking do So this is looking like some kind of Sakdos deck. But with green, like splashed in. No, with, um, yeah, with green splashed in. That's what, that's what I'm looking for. Okay, don't play out any mana. Don't need to. Ooh, we have Mrs. Pilgrimage as well. So let's play out the Zendikar Incarnate. Probably going to swing with all three elves again. Just because I can. You probably block one of them. I push through two damage. Um, I could play the Gruel Guildgate. I don't know. Do I do it? Let me just think about this. So, if I play this now... Actually, yeah, I'm going to play out this now. Because the reason being is that this goes up to a 6-6. Six, six, providing it doesn't die this turn. Which is poss possible. I don't know. Um, I'm not sure he can sacrifice and steal in the same turn by the looks of things, as he only has the one black banner open. But um, yeah, I'm thinking if he can't kill this or sack it or whatever, I chan I chant his ignition and then just punch him in the face. Simple as that. Or just like swing. I don't know. I'll see how it goes. Depends what he plays this turn, I suppose. That all depends. Come on, mate, hurry up. I want to challenge ignition your face. So we do have the uh, backup of the Zendikar's Royal to come down. We've got Nissus Pilgrimage and two mana to actually uh, just generate lots of tokens here. Lots of our lovely little elemental tokens. I'm wondering what he's going to play. So I think he's probably lost at this point. I've got too many options to like just keep punching him in the face and stuff. I mean, even if he can get rid of this, I've still got Chandra's Ignition to, like, board wipe him with, with like, uh, an elemental. And then just keep punching him. But I'm just waiting for him to do something. I'm waiting for this time to tick down right now. Okay, so he's played Act of Treason. That's fine. We just block with an elemental this turn. Unless he's got, say, for example, a... Um, Bone Splinters could... He's got another act of treason. Okay. So we won't be getting bone splinters. We will get, we'll be getting punched in the face for 10. But that's fine, as I don't care right now. So he swings with everything, I'd assume. Yep, okay, he's dead. He's So I go down to 6, but I survive. No, he's not done that, but that doesn't matter anyway, mate, because you're dead. So you've played out all your mana. You've got nothing left. See, I go down to nine. So I don't think he can destroy over these two, but I think this is just 
game over for him. Ha! We're sent to Chicken Chandler's Ignition. Awesome. But we're just going to uh, sweep him. Then swing. So, why would you sacrifice the Evolving Wilds now? That doesn't give you anything else. It just gives you a tapped land and you're dead. That's that, that's GG. Okay, that was uh, that was really good start to the uh, to the series. So uh, two wins with the land synergy deck, as you can see, works pretty well over these last two games. I'm really surprised. I've not been this successful um, playtesting this deck, but apparently it's worked quite well for you guys. So uh, the recorder's curse has kind of uh, flipped round, which is awesome. But that is the end of the episode for now. Uh, as always, guys, don't forget to comment and like. If you enjoyed the episode, I will be putting a link, um, well not a link, I will be hopefully from now on putting the deck list in um, in the descriptions for you guys that uh, can't be bothered to actually kind of like watch it and just want something to read instead, so I will do that. But uh, apart from that, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. Goodbye.